Thank you, Ashley. Paul brings an impressive record at Public Servant, de dedicated to improving the lives of his fellow citizens. Most recently, Paul served pres President Obama in office, public em engagements at the White House. He, is a, he was an a liaison for the constituencies, including social safety net groups. In the role, he was responsible for long-term strategic planning related to critical investments in low-income communities. He executed creative programs that invited Americans to take, mo take more active role in their government. Paul led a mentorship group for young men, an intimate designed to invest in the local high school students through the community service and professional development. A graduate of the Howard University School of Law, Paul's accomplishments are impressive. Several national and local nonprofits have applauded his ex exceptional leadership and contributions to the public service. He is someone who builds bridges and gets results. Paul joined the Corporation for National and Community Service on April 28, 2014. Please welcome Paul Montero. All right, well, good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you, Alyssa, for the very kind introduction. Um, and as she mentioned, I am the director of AmeriCorps VISTA, the Domestic Peace Corps. Um, I'm sure many of you were expecting someone a bit younger, right? Maybe? Um, but I'm so excited and proud to be here today to celebrate this milestone in your career. Uh, and on behalf of the entire team back in Washington at the Corporation for Na National Community Service, thank you for answering the call to serve. I know all of you share the sense of gratitude I do around your parents or aunties or grandparents or cousins or any family members or friends that are here supporting you today, as well as the staff that has made today possible. So let's have another round of applause for them. And I also uh, want to recognize a couple of the big cheeses here. Definitely Mr. Mayor, it's an honor to meet you. And Bishop Sage, honored to meet you. Uh, Mississippi State Senator Hobson, um, Vicksburg Alderman Willis Thompson, Jay Ledbetter from the governor's office, uh, Stephanie Booker from Congressman Thompson's office, uh, David Mallory, good to have breakfast with you this morning and, and share your vision around uh, what we can do together in Mississippi. Uh, Josie Shoemate on the NCCC advisory board, good to meet you. Um, and distinguished guests and all of the board members, it's an honor to meet uh, many of you this morning. Each time a man stands up for an ideal or acts to improve the lot of others, or strikes out against injustice, he sends forth a tiny ripple of hope. And crossing each other from a million different centers of energy and daring, those ripples build a current which can sweep down the mightiest walls of oppression and resistance. Those are, those are the words of Robert Kennedy, almost 50 years ago, uh, speaking about the work that he was doing through the Peace Corps, but I think the work uh, that you're doing here and about to embark on, uh, these words are just as relevant. I want to say a few words, as Don has already previewed, about hope. Now, as much as I kid about my age, I think I, I love the look on people's faces when I meet them for the first time. Um, it's, it's a safe bet I'm one of the youngest directors AmeriCorps VISTA has ever had in its 50 years of uh, being around. Uh, the same was true of my last job in the White House, where I was for five years. I was one of the youngest directors uh, to ever serve in that position. Uh, and you've heard my biography a bit uh, from Alyssa, uh, but the funny thing about biographies is sometimes they leave out the bad stuff. Uh, when you fail, when you don't get what you want, when things don't go according to the plan you had, when you were challenged, what do you do? And if I read my other biography, the one with some bumps and bruises, the ones with duct tape around the edges of that resume from getting knocked around by life, uh, it would probably read like this. It would say, I'm the second of five children born to a first gener generation immigrant, uh, a teenage mom. Uh, I would share something on the resume about my dad who just wasn't there. It would have a bullet point or two about the community programs we turned to when we didn't have enough to eat from month to month, or when the electricity got cut off, or when we got evicted on more than one occasion. 
You would also have a couple bullets about the great community programs, in some parts supported by programs like VISTA, that helped us make it from month to month. There would be a short line about the abuse uh, my mom and, and all of us faced when my stepdad decided to drink too much, and a blurb on what colleges I didn't get into and what law schools didn't take me in. Now, some of you may come from backgrounds similar to mine or even more modest than mine, but whatever your story, whether you faced first world problems or things more serious, I wanted to again talk about when challenges and disappointments come, hope is the thing that has to sustain us. Now there will certainly be others that underestimate you because of your youth or relative level of inexperience or your last name or the town you come from or what you look like. We can't do much about that. My point to you is, is don't be one of them, the, the people that underestimate you. Today marks a major milestone and one that you had to press through a lot to even get to to sit in these chairs right now. You have to make the deliberate decision to hope when confronted with an obstacle and not interpret that closed door as the limit and the boundary of your potential. Find another door. Your NCCC members, build another door. Today marks the end of four weeks of training to prepare you for your service in the FEMA Corps program. In these first weeks, the staff here in the Southern Region have worked each and every day to provide you with the training and experiences you need to support your success over the next 10 months. The training should remind you why you joined FEMA Corps in the first place, to serve. It's about others, not about us. The spirit of service taps into the universal truth that uh, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. is often quoted as citing, the quote that everybody can be great because anybody can serve. And throughout this journey, your service will present you with many opportunities. You'll certainly be ready to assist disaster victims at some of the most difficult moments in their life. Whatever else they may need, as, as Don was talking about, they will certainly be looking, grasping for hope. You have the chance to provide it as they face the moment of truth that they didn't plan for, they didn't expect. It certainly wasn't part of their life plan to have a disaster upend their entire life. You will serve to make FEMA an agency that is ready to respond to the needs of Americans through the work you do at the regional offices and at headquarters. You will have wonderful opportunities to serve in your independent service projects that you develop as a team. But perhaps the most challenging and rewarding service you'll have is living and serving together and encouraging one another. Learning how to serve food for and cook for 12 people that might include a vegan or a vegetarian or a meat eater riding in a van with someone who decided not to shower that day, uh, sitting in close quarters with somebody with earphones technically in, but you can hear every word of the song you hate. <laughs> Don't miss it. All of those experiences are wrapped up in that other biography that really makes you and pushes you and challenges you and stretches you to make you the person that you're meant to be. These are the key experiences that will shape you as an individual, as a core member, and as a leader. These are the ripples of hope that will continue to shape you as you create your own ripples going forward. Now this morning you joined the 830,000 men and women who have taken the pledge to serve and improve the lives of countless Americans. Next month on September 12th, we will recognize the commitment of AmeriCorps members and alums and highlight the extraordinary, extraordinary impact AmeriCorps has had through its 20 years of existence. And now, in a few short moments, you'll be a part of, officially, that tradition. The 20th anniversary of AmeriCorps will recognize the important moments in AmeriCorps history. But don't forget that we also look forward to the exciting future that lies ahead, the future that you're going to create over the next 10 months. You're all going to lay the groundwork for expanding opportunities for more people to serve. You're representing yourselves and representing the A in all of your actions and your words. Please keep that in mind during the, the tough times. You'll represent hope to me, to your family, and to our neighbors in need that you're serving. So I'd like to congratulate all the members of FEMA Corps Class 21 for your hard work thus far in the program. And I hope to welcome many of you as AmeriCorps VISTA members maybe next year. Think about it. Talk to AC. AmeriCorps is poised for even greater impact in the next 20 years. And you all will be the starting force of getting things done for America. So thank you very much for allowing me to speak with you. And I want to invite 
our core members to now stand, and I'll lead you in the pledge. Now we'll recite this pledge together. Please raise your right hand. Let's begin. I will get things done for America to make our people safer, smarter, and healthier. I will bring Americans together to strengthen our communities. Faced with apathy, I will take action. Faced with conflict, I will seek common ground. Faced with adversity, I will persevere. I will carry this commitment with me this year and beyond. I am an AmeriCorps member, and I will get things done. Congratulations. Thank you so much.